Prime Time Glick with Jiminy's special guests, Moraine Brocco. You're doing the graduate. I am. And you're going to be buck naked. I am. <laughs> I'm sitting in the front row with a telescope. Well, there's a room upstairs if you want to fool around. We're going upstairs. And John McEnroe. Did the queen kill Diana? Answer me yes or no. I refuse to answer on the grounds I may be incriminated. I'm referring to Queen Latifah. That I hadn't heard. <laughs> and Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm Adrian Van Voorhees, and am I the only one who needs a Glick fix? No, Damn straight. Ladies and gentlemen, Jiminy Glick. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you so much. I'd give you all a big sloppy mouth kiss, but unfortunately, I have congenital herpes. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's fun. And say hello to my dear friend with the baton, no less, Adrian Van Voorhees and the Adrian Van Voorhees son. <laughs> oh. You know, I was in the shower today and I was soaping up everything that was reachable. And all of a sudden, I started thinking about all the things that I hate. Oh my gosh! And I narrowed it down to three things that truly frost the hairs on my Noto special place. <laughs> Adrian, that is the cue, dear. Ah. The three things that truly frost the hairs on Jiminy's Noto special place. <laughs> It goes on too long like that. It's very Letterman-esque. You always say that, but I, I, I really don't get the comparison, so I wish you'd stop saying that. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Anyways, number three. Fuck up, people. People who walk around like this with a nose so high. I hate stuck-up people, because they're always thinking they're better than you. What's that about? <laughs> Number two. Cucumbers. I can't stand the texture of cucumbers. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'd rather wear one than eat one. <laughs> and finally, number one. The number one thing that truly frosts the hairs on my new, new special place. <laughs> Telephone answering machines. Hi, yi, 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 yi. It seems like everywhere you go, someone has them. Have you noticed that, Adrian? Well, they've been around for 30 years now. Okay, well, I, I we are trying to recycle a monologue here, sir. I'm sorry. Please continue. Well, no, it's a little bit late now, isn't it? You've totally undermined the bit because you refuse to come to production meetings to find out what is the material that we're recycling. No, 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 no. You can't be there because you'd rather go to a damn stretch class. I like to feel limber. Oh, so do I. And so do my first guests. They originate from Germany, Europe. And I saw them at Stella McCartney's party and they were a riot! They came in and did their thing and they knocked everyone from a loop to another loop. So please welcome the comedy stylings of the three silly skinheads. Are you? <laughs> Stealing from Letterman always give me the munchies. Oh my God, there is not one thing here that is cream filled. This is a violation of the writer in my contract. Hello. Young lady, I am aghast. There is not one thing on this table that is cream filled. I don't work here. Security! I'm in danger! Do you remember the time that you and Roseanne Barr were trapped in a meat locker at Willie Nelson's Farm Aid concert? Remember it? I still have inner thigh frostbite as a reminder. Daddy! Ah! <gasps> if it's proof you want, Dada, I happen to have a positive DNA match. How did 
did you get your mitts and my DNA? It's from your liposuction, Popo. It, you can download your gene map from solipsuction.com. Then you really are my father? Dress up. Oh, 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 it's going to be fun. And I had Dodio Fayad, but I broke him. And I have complimentary landmines so we can place them around. Isn't it going to be wonderful? My daughter, my angel. Sam, in hell. Drop the knife, Lucinda. Lick me like an old day green sickle. Sorry about that, Mr. Glick. She escaped from the state hospital. Are you saying that my little daughter, Candy Bar Glick, is mentally unstable? She's not your daughter, you benighted twit. Oh, this is such sad news. I was so happy having a daughter. I mean, sure, Morgan is effeminate, but it just isn't the same. By the way, do you mind if I hang about? I'm a tremendous fan of the silly skinheads. Oh, I think they're wonderful. They're skinheads! Skinheads, ladies and gentlemen. Ha 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 ha, wonderful. A frothy combination of merriment and neo Nazism. Wonderful. And we'll be back after these words coming toward you. <laughs> coming up, Jiminy Talks with Leonardo DiCaprio. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so furious with rocker Ted Nugent right now, I could spit nickels. Because here's what's happened. Our scheduled guest, the wonderful Leonardo DiCaprio, is, as you know, quite the sportsman. So Leo decided to go hang gliding this morning off the cliffs of Malibu. And he was soaring out over the ocean when he was spotted by Ted Nugent who mistook Leo for a rare California condor. So he whipped out his 12 gauge and blasted poor Leo right out of the sky. Oh. <laughs> and right now, <laughs> our scheduled guest, Leonardo DiCaprio, is in an emergency room in Oxnard, having pellets removed from every conceivable part of his buttocks. <laughs> Filling in for Leonardo DiCaprio is our very own Adrian Van Voorhees. Oh, now, I will not have you booing this man who at the last second was kind enough to fill in. Thank you, Jimmy. Of course you're disappointed. Do you think I'm not disappointed? Well, let's give Adrian a chance for Pete's sake. Who knows? He might surprise us all. So, Adrian, what do you have in store for us? Well, I thought we could do a cooking segment. <laughs> See, as luck would have it, I've uh, just released my new book, The Crepe Paper. Celebrity Crepes by yours truly. Dear Adrian viewers, due to the overwhelming Desi lack of audience approval for this segment in particular, and Adrian Van Voorhees in general, we will be abandoning this portion of the show in favor of something with at least a smidgen of entertainment value. A tough decision to be sure, but these are tough times we live in. Thanks for getting it. Once again, it's time for Let's Talk Jocks with Jiminy Glick. And now, here's Jiminy. I am sitting with an absolute living legend. And I know this because he told me to say that. So if he said it, it must be true. The wonderful John McEnroe. Don't lie to your fans here and your viewers that I had told you to say that. You're, can I say bad words here? Say it, go ahead. You're bullsh**. Ha <laughs> ha, wonderful. But you know what, we've set the levels, so just try to keep it down. I know that's your gimmick and it works, and it's like, you know, an old stripper who, you know, has beads or something. You're not gonna get me going. And you just kept going up 
to those linesmen when you were playing racquetball or whatever sport you did, and you go up and say, you're, you're full of, you're, a, you're an idiot. You've, you've got to be kidding. What, what's that phrase? You like? cannot be serious. And that was kind of, in the 80s, you look marvelous. It was like your catchphrase, wasn't it? You're right. damn right. You had these tamper tantrums. Was this a publicist's idea, or do you really have mental problems? It was really for, uh, <laughs> Is there a third option? No, I think that's enough, boy. <laughs> I think I'd go more with the second than the first. Then. Mental issues. Mental issues. Mental issues. I don't have a publicist. You went to Stanford University. That's correct. And you didn't graduate. You flunked out of Stanford. I didn't flunk out. They would have kept me in even if I had flunked out. Because I could hit a stupid tennis ball over the net, all right? My kids tell me this, too. You wouldn't have gotten into Stanford if you didn't play tennis. They speak like gangsters, your kids? Well, did that sound like a gangster? You didn't go to Stanford until you go... That sounded like we were doing a production of Guys and Dolls uh, and Lorna as, Luft was late as, for her cue. I... <laughs> now, let's see. So we've discussed your limited brightness. You won at Wimbledon. What was that like? Oh, we're playing at Wimbledon. That's in England. That's correct. It's a tremendous feeling. The tradition there is fantastic, yes. and he, sometimes even the queen and king show up. The king and queen showed up. I've you seen. know I knew Princess Diana, right? Say you feel the same way I do. Did the Queen kill Diana? Answer me yes or no. Um, I refuse to answer on the grounds I may be incriminated. I'm referring to Queen Latifah. There is a rumor <laughs> that Queen Latifah killed Diana. She, that? I hadn't she heard. Hit her, she hit her with a, with a... Hit her with her ass? <laughs> <laughs> hit her with her ass. That's what I heard. Once. That's it. You got it. Man. <laughs> You're doing me now. <laughs> and you said you were limited in your See craft. That? I'm doing it. You can do it. You just shouldn't do it for lots of people. That's how good the Well, then that's the perfect show to do it oh, for. He's losing it. He's losing it. This boy's <laughs> losing it. Oh, that's good. This has been fun. <laughs> <sighs> Get him an espresso. You know who I love is that Anna... Kornikova? Kornikova. Kornikova. Yeah, she's a... She says she's a virgin. If she's a virgin, I've never questioned a call in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Prince, stop. Yes. Whatever those expressions, that's wonderful. I'm going on a limb there. But you know, she's with um, Inglesias. Oh, Enrique. Enrique, he's, he's Julio's Not son. Not Julio? No, no, Julio is about 77 years of age now. <laughs> but uh, Enrique is current, and he's, he's dating this girl, Anna Car Carmen. Yes. I predict them to last another two months. How come, John McEnroe? Musicians and athletes. Oh, it never does last. Oh, well, that's does right. It? I'm married to a musician. And this is your book, which is a wonderful, wonderful book. Thank you. It's, that's what I wanted called, to mention. It's called John you McEnroe. Cannot be serious. Oh, that's wonderful. And look at you looking moody. You're looking moody. I look pretty all right, right? You look good. You do. Compared here, to you. You this fat more, turd! Oh no! <laughs> more, of, more of your rage! More of your anger! This has been fun, John. I want you to come back again. And next time you'll promise, right? Next time you'll promise that... Will, you, like will you, you ask me some nice questions next time? Some better questions, maybe? You're telling me I didn't ask you nice questions. They were out. They were perfectly on the line. They, they went were in. You got to be kidding, Come John here and kiss my ass. I don't want to kiss your ass unless there's money involved. Give right. me a break. Give me a break. You give me a break. You stop it. And you hear me out. You hear when I say and speak to you. you I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Oh, you're out of here. How about you're out of here before you sat down? Thanks, man. Oh, man. Oh, suddenly we're in a beatnik movie. Ah. God, I wish... I wish Byung Borg was in town. He is. Let's, let's phone and get him over. Jiminy sits down with Lorraine Bracco after this. Today's Lollywood Fables entitled Bob Crane and His Video Vixens. Hey, you know what, ladies? I'm going to go talk to my plant. They like it when you do that. Here we go. Hey, Mr. Plant. Oh, you think the lighting's a little gloomy in here? Come on, what are we shooting? Cries and whispers? I've had it with your complaining, you no talent. Hey, I'm hey, gonna hey, keep hey, your hey, head here. Hey, hey. Bob Crane on the next Lala Wood Fables. Now we go out and about with Jiminy Glick. For someone like myself to be sitting beside one of the stars of The Sopranos, a fantastic series on Showtime, the fabulous Lorraine Bracco. <laughs> I love you. Ruff, 
Russell, look at you. Aren't you exquisite looking? Oh, and you play you. the psychiatrist. Yes. Dr. Malfi. Yes. And she's a funny sort. Tell us about that girl. Um. It's good talking with you. Thank you. And but you did also the Lincoln Center. You did yes. Goose and Tom Tom. Yes. And that's about Nicole and Cruz before the divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. That's David Ray wrote that. Did he really? Yes, he did. Oh my and god. And I really did it with Sean Penn and Madonna. So you're not too far <sighs> off. Sean Penn and Madonna. I shared my dressing room with her. Oh my god. That was that. interesting. Yeah, I bet because because I think Madonna is a spoiled person. In what way? Oh, I wasn't expecting that question. Oh, shoot. Um, how do I mean that? Um, well, I mean, I think that she's just a spoiled person. I just don't know what else to say. Okay. Usually when I make statements, I'm some... not expecting to have a thesis written on it. Don't you think she spoils herself, though? Good, thank you, helping me. Yes, she spoils herself, because she's got, she's, she's got all these riches, and I think she's demanding to people. She's not nice to hairdressers. Wow, well, I was very... I, mean, I don't know that for sure. I'm just guessing. Okay, well, I was very lucky, because when we shared the dressing room together, she was very kind and very uh, sharing. Yes, but you're only coming from a, this position of actually having met her. Hmm. Okay, you share a birthday with Sting. That's well. I do. Isn't he wonderful? I met Sting when I lived in France. Tu sais ça? Quand j'ai vécu en France, je l'ai rencontré. Honest to God, if I weren't happily married with Dixie, I'd jump you right now. I mean, look what you have going for you. You've got a face like a goddess. You have this fake French thing, you know, about eight words, but you know how to spread them From out. From Brooklyn. And you've got that whole Brooklyn, this is my gab! You have that thing going. And the combination is just to make you melt. Any heterosexual will tell you. The gay boys won't. And good fellas, you work with Ratatat Marty Corsese. He talks so quickly, doesn't he? What's that about? <laughs> we were once fighting over a cab. I finally said, take it, take it, Motormouth, take it. And off he drove away, and he had a little one of those things in there, his eyes. It was wonderful. Oh, and then you work with, I think, one of the great stars, and I can't get him on this show because he's too high and mighty, Leo DiCaprio. But he is a talent. He's adorable. He looks like Milosevic with work. Ooh, I like that. But I do think that he's a real talent. He is. And when that ship broke in half... <gasps> Did you cry? <gasps> it's okay. <laughs> Kate Winston never got over it. She was as old as Hades at the end. Oh, I... And she didn't want to live. Oh, God damn icebergs. Really? I just hate icebergs. I never, I never, uh, I kind of liked them before that, but I saw them, and I said, damn icebergs. You know, you would like, you, you, I think you should go see this other movie that, um, please. I, I can't let this be oh, lost. No. Oh, I, I hope no, it's good. I had good. individual fake nasal hairs put in there by, by a man in Paris four years ago, and they were supposed I to last I know ten him. years. Yes, <laughs> believe me, you know him, which is another issue. All right, this has been so much fun. I've loved you. I've adored you. I'd love to, I'd love to get you alone in a room, and I'd show you what a real man's about. Well, there's a room upstairs if you want to fool around. Come on. Okay, I'm going to ask you, camera person, that new camera person, there is $14 for each of you to be divided by two. Sound man's involved. That's three into 14. You do the math. This is our secret. We're going upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful Adrian Van Voorhees for his diet, albeit not successful, attempt at filling in for Leonardo DiCaprio. And Adrian, I'm amazed at your musical versatility. I mean, you not only play that 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 big string thingy, the, um, harp, 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 
But my goodness, you also play the piano. Well, God did bless me with multiple talents. Oh, he did. Too bad he couldn't have gifted you with just a smidgen of on-air personality. Can you imagine what you've been able to do with your career then? You know what? I don't have to take this rubbish from you. I am kind enough to bail out your fat butt when your good friend Leonardo DiCrapio caps out on you. He got shot by Ted Nugent. Oh, please. You bought that. You actually bought that. He's out with his posse right now celebrating the fact that he didn't have to do your pathetic little excuse for his show. <laughs> you just really hurt my feelings. Oh, my feelings. Oh, so you just... Oh, I'm sorry, Aidy. Oh, I'm sorry, Pudge. Okay, let's 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 make a pact. Let's make a pact. We'll never, ever say another insulting thing to each other again. Deal? Let me sleep on that. Get back to me. Yes.